Now, in what is now known as the biggest bank failure since the 2008 financial crisis, the collapse of SVB Financial Group, Silicon Valley Bank, is now stoking fears of a larger meltdown across global financial markets. Now, in the latest sign of the ripple effects and, of course, growing concern over the health of financial firms, Moody's Investor Service has placed First Republic Bank and five other U.S. lenders on review for down. Grades. The credit rating agency cited concerns over these lenders' reliance on uninsured deposit funding and also unrealized losses in their asset portfolios. Now, the move comes after U.S. bank stocks were battered today, and that's despite the government's decision to rescue SVB's de depositors by, of course, unveiling a facility to support lenders and also preventing more bank runs in the country. Now, as regulators take over, many are still concerned if their own money is safe right now. Well, here in Africa, startup founders and investors are watching these events quite closely. Of course, after SVB's collapse saw thousands of accounts at the tech-friendly bank frozen, there is some trepidation on the continent around the future of startup funds that also operate here in Africa. For example, Tanzania-based Nala Fintech, which operates in Kenya, Uganda, Ghana and Rwanda, says that it had most of its money in SVB Bank. And after moving it to another bank, the company has been unable to lock back into its SVB accounts. Well, let's now get the inside story from the African fintech, Nala Money. We're now joined by COO Nikolai Eddy. Uh, he joins us here in Nairobi. Great to have you on the show uh, with us, Nikolai. And let's start off with Nala Money's experience in this whole SVB saga. When did the warning bell start ringing for you? How did your firm react to it? And certainly, are your funds safe and intact today? Yes. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, having me on the show here. Um, I wish it was to discuss, you know, happier things. But, um, you know, as you rightfully mentioned, uh, you know, we did have most of our startup funding locked away in Silicon Valley Bank. And, you know, I started to see rumbles on Wednesday night and on Thursday, you know, other startup founders really in WhatsApp groups um, talking about the Silicon Valley Bank situation. And then slowly but surely, um, you know, them talking about, hey, well, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to move my money over to, you know, one of the main street banks, you know, the Wells Fargo's, Chase's, uh, et cetera, of the world. And so, um, you know, I didn't really pay much attention to it. I, you know, I thought there's no way that uh, something like this could happen. You know, Silicon Valley Bank has been around for 40 years. Um, we've been in safe hands. And uh, suddenly it was on Thursday night. And this is, uh, I was luckily staying up late. And um, I saw, you know, further news of sort of what was happening in the industry. And I decided, um, you know, 20 minutes before wire cutoff time to log into the portal and move really everything that we had over. So that was 20 minutes before wire cutoff. And then, of course, we know what happened on Friday morning. Mm. And where do your funds stand today? Are your funds intact? Yes, yes, they are. So luckily, we were able to move everything over. Uh, the wire processed successfully. Um, so by Friday morning, we had received the funds into our you know, other main bank account that we had. Um, although I will say, you know, there's many other um, startup friends who I have here who also have funding from the U.S., from Silicon Valley, um, who had money stored in Silicon Valley Bank, and that was the only bank account that they had. Um, so many of them, you know, it was a very stressful weekend for all of us. And, and right. to be honest, I felt sick to my stomach, you know, just even thinking about it, um, you know, as many of them were worried about, you know, what's going to happen to the startup funding that we have, as that was really their only alternative. Now, I'd like to delve further into that because uh, what we've heard so far is that SVB was an important uh, banking partner for the entire Silicon Valley ecosystem. So much so that some startups say that SVB was actually the only bank that would accept them uh, at some point. But is it clear to you just how many African startups invested with them and how many African startups now have exposure to this collapse? Yeah, well, I think there's really two sides of the story here in the in the startup ecosystem across the African continent. Um, there's a number of startups that did get funding from the U.S. And as as you probably know, when you get funding from the U.S., investors highly encourage you to open up accounts in the U.S. where you can receive that funding. And so, if you're a foreign uh, founder, um, you know 
you need to be able to uh, open up accounts. And Silicon Valley Bank was one of those accounts that, uh, or one of those banks that allowed you to open up, you know, accounts without actually being physically present, you know, in the United States. Um, so I think if we talk about this, the companies that were impacted, I have, you know, many friends who also went through the Y Combinator program in the U.S. who were funded by Silicon Valley. Um, you know, who were impacted. And then I also have on the other side, a handful of friends um, who didn't, you know, necessarily um, establish in the US, maybe got funding from sources on the continent, uh, who have bootstrapped, who've gotten uh, funding from Europe, and they were less impacted, um, I would say. So it's, it's really, you know, both. I will say I have, you know, uh, many, many startup friends who were impacted by the situation. Well, I'd like to get a sense. <coughs> excuse me. I'd like to get a sense from you how significant uh, this SVB collapse is to the sector, uh, because it seemed to have been such a critical bank for, uh, especially tech startups. Uh, how critical was this for stakeholders uh, in the space? Yeah, yeah. I think you know. It, I think what there's there's two pieces to that. I think the first piece is you know you're right. It was extremely critical. Um, you know. We got a message from some of our, our partners at Y Combinator, and we saw tweets over the weekend as well from Gary Tan, who's the CEO over at YC, who said that 30% of the businesses um, you know, that have invested uh, or had had money with Silicon Valley Bank uh, didn't figure out or didn't know how they would make payroll. So that's the same situation you know, that many of uh, you know, my, my peers who are um, startup founders uh, have experienced as well. Um, and so this is something that we're currently going through. I think. The thing that has been very positive has been, um, you know, suddenly the large banks across the U.S. have really stepped up. The chases of the world, um, the city banks, uh, who've made it much easier for us to open up accounts. So we're in the process as well of opening up redundant accounts. Um, I think this will have a major impact, though, you know, really across um, uh, the ecosystem as startups think to, you know, where do I put my money? You know, we're getting messages from investors even today who've advised us don't keep more than 250k in any one bank account spread it out open up accounts at you know as many banks as possible um, and these are you know uh, well-known investors who are sort of advising their portfolio companies in that direction and I know that um, you know I've received similar comments from some of my uh, colleagues here uh, in Kenya uh, where I live um, who are also you know in the startup space. Mm. Well, Nikolai, while it's certainly good to hear that U.S. banks are now opening up uh, more, we can't ignore the ripple effects that uh, SVB's collapse has had uh, and how it's impacting the U.S. banking system and financial system right now. So I'd like to get a, your take. Do you think uh, this could have ripple effects on other sectors uh, in Africa, across board in terms of finance, technology, uh, and in other areas as well? Yeah, I mean, we we know that, you know, when something major happens to the banking, you know, world in the U.S., that does have a ripple effect, you know, across the globe. I think it's still a little bit too early to say exactly what that impact would be, um, you know, across the continent. You know, we do see, uh, for example, you know, even some of the funds uh, like the YC Growth Fund, you know, talking about not investing in, in, in growth stage uh, companies anymore. We see, uh, I think we'll see probably a, a further importance on quality revenue. Um, this will certainly have an impact on the startup ecosystem here across, you know, the African continent as startups go to raise, you know, larger and larger rounds as they will be, you know, measured from, uh, you know, on, on different sort of metrics. And I think um, this type of crisis, you know, that we're experiencing today will have that ripple effect, you know, across the African continent. It's a bit too early to say, you know, what exactly that means. And, um, you know, I think we'll, we'll know more probably in the coming uh, week or two. All right. We're certainly watching it closely. Many thanks, uh, Nikolai, for joining us on the show today and for those great insights.